Hi, I'm Dr. Weathers, and we're back here at the Doctor Project Bootcamp. I want to do a couple of things today. I want to summarize uh, in briefest form a distillation of what goes into Chapter 4, and we'll do a separate video looking at what goes into Chapter 5, and then finally uh, a piece on the oral defense. So what do I know by heart about Chapter 4? In a previous uh, video that you saw, I, I discussed the difference between Chapters 4 and 5 uh, as the difference between the left hemisphere and the right hemisphere. And that's not a bad metaphor for looking at chapter 4, where the idea in chapter 4 is to summarize uh, in briefest, most concise, even scientific language, what did you find? So if you're doing a theoretical doctoral project, as you drew upon the various uh, lines of research, various theoretical orientations in chapter, in chapter 2, your lit review, now we're talking about pulling out of that or distilling down what did you find that applies specifically to your research questions? Anything in chapter four should be addressed to your research questions. Anything that doesn't address them should be uh, deleted. Uh, it would, we want it to be lean and clean in chapter four. A theoretical study, you'll be looking at new insights that uh, draw on the literature that you've looked at. This is where you integrate what you found from the literatures, and this is your creative contribution towards addressing research question one, research question two, and so on. Whereas a qualitative study, what you'll have is you'll have findings from either interviews, case studies, phenomenological analysis, and so on. What you want to do here is summarize the research findings without discussion. And what do I mean by that? This is not the place for speculation. This isn't the place for interpretation. You'll have ample opportunity to do that in Chapter 5. Here what we want you to do is to summarize what you found, describe it in the tersest scientific language you can, so that ideally your reader could make their own independent judgment about the facts. You want to describe it in such a way that there's no room for uh, interpretation here. As I say, that will come up in chapter five. Um, I advocate presenting your, your findings uh, by research questions. It's an easy way to organize it. Research question one, for example, if you're doing a theoretical analysis and you have two or three themes that apply to, to uh, your research question number one, break it out just that way. Research question number one, restate it, discuss the themes that arose in your literature review and how you're synthesizing that literature into maybe a new theoretical orientation and, uh, and uh, apply it by research question. If you're doing a qualitative analysis, same type of deal. Is that, it, that uh, Let's say that you have certain themes, you interview 10 people and seven of those 10 people uh, give evidence of this attitude or that behavior. <coughs> this is where you call all that, uh, distill all that down into uh, a question by research question by research question. Uh, those seven out of ten, I recommend that you summarize the the actual. If, if if you have interview data, that you actually quote the interview data that su that supports or maybe refutes your research question. Uh, if you're working with theoretical analysis, uh, this would be a place where you uh, where you quote qualified experts that are addressing your question, you're wanting to bolster whatever it is that's in support of your research questions in this section. Um, I, one rule of thumb, maybe a minimum of two or three quotes per research question if you're doing a theoretical analysis. You're not doing a review of chapter two, you're trying to cut down to just the, the core, the essence, and two or three quotes that are the strongest quotes that support what you were looking for. That's the results section in a nutshell. Mm -hmm.